the DVD player has stopped working. And if you want to replace that, Mopar wants to charge you $700. But today I'm going to show you how you can fix yours for $20. Hey, this is Joshua Budget Mechanic, and today I have a bit of a unique fix. Behind me you can see I have a lovely uh, Town & Country 2014 minivan. This is my car that wife and kids drive around in, and I was just informed that the DVD player has stopped working. Now I don't know if you know what a DVD is, but it's an ancient technology used to play movies on a circular disc. And if you have children and you go on a road trip and your van has a DVD player, it can change your life. So this is a pretty common problem with the Chrysler family vehicles and their DVD players going bad. And what happens is the player is fine, you can hear the audio, but the screen goes black. And if you want to replace that, Mopar wants to charge you $700. But today I'm going to show you how you can fix yours for $20. So this is generally going to work on Chrysler cars starting around 2007 to like 2018. So like Durango's, Town & Country, Dodge Caravans. And what happens is instead of replacing the entire screen assembly, you can replace the part that breaks, which is this flex cable. And you can get that for like 15 to 20 bucks online. And we'll include the link. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because at the very last step installing this cable, it's pretty sensitive and you don't want to mess it up. So there's a couple tips for you. As you can see, the DVD is playing. The screen up front works great, but there is no picture on the screen back here, which is obviously the important one. So in order to get to the cable, we've got to take this whole console off drop it down, and then pull out the guts of the DVD screen. Okay, so I'm just gonna start from the front and work my way back. There's tons of little fasteners all through here and we're gonna go through every single one of them. But first, this middle section up front, try not to damage anything. So you can see they're just the little pop tabs. Little tab here, push and pull. We've got up here a 10 millimeter bolt and on this side, a Phillips. While we're here, I'm gonna unplug the wires for the player. So that's a plug here with a push tab on the back side, a little bit hard to get to, but you push that down and pull it out. So it's a push button in and then the lever comes down. Next, we're gonna open the screen itself. So we've got the two Phillips and then these two seven millimeter bolts. So next we're gonna come all the way to the back to the rearmost storage compartment. There's three of them, but if you open the back one, we've got another two sets of Phillips in the back and then the two seven millimeter bolts forward. So all the way in the back, we're gonna pull down this section just like we did at the front. You're just gonna grab it. You might need a little pry. Really don't wanna break this thin strip of plastic. Tiny little push tabs on the back of these plugs. 10 millimeter bolt and the Phillips on the other side. Okay, so we've got all of our fasteners out and now we just gotta pry down the little push fittings that are holding everything. There we go. So once I'm here, I've got this one plug I've gotta remove little push on the back of it and then it's free. So you can see the little friction push pins that I was doing at the end. They're just a really stiff fit. And uh, this is why I wanna remove all the cables uh, for the screen up here at, when I was uh, working up front and the lights at the back because I don't wanna to have to deal with those when this thing's hanging. So we're gonna lay this thing down and work on the back of the DVD screen. We have two plugs we need to take out. Both of them have really easy to reach push tabs, gray one and a little white one. T20 Torx. So we're going to weasel this out. There's these little points that you have to lift the hoops over. These are sitting with stuff in them, so just make sure you don't break those off. This is what we're after. So there were the four uh, bolts. Remember the two sevens and the two Phillips? Uh, inside the, the DVD screen panel. I did them at the beginning, you don't have to. Okay, so now we just need to get this metal backing plate off and it's just a ton of Phillips screws all around. So I'm gonna go for that. And there is a hidden one underneath this label. These are mostly like number one Phillips, so it is a bit smaller, just keep that in mind.
All right, now we got to deal with these little tabs on the side. So they have to be kind of pried outward to clear the plastic. I'm going to do that on this side and hold it. Now we're getting into the guts and you can see this is the cable that we are replacing, the one underneath. So this is where the uh, budget mechanic needs to be uh, very delicate. First thing I'm gonna do is get this black one out of the way. And the way I do that is I'm gonna stick a little flathead screwdriver in and I'm prying the tab away and up. And then on the other side, the reverse. There we go. So this one doesn't actually plugging in there, it's just being held by this retainer. Now I'm going to flip up the little black part is the retainer on the white cable. You just get in here and you super gently pry it up. There we go. And then once that's up, the cable should walk nicely out. Wow, that was sticky. So I'm still attached with this wire here, so I can't just uh, go totally separate, but at least I'm free enough. I'm not gonna tear any of those ribbons. And what I've gotta go now do is split the case on the actual flip screen. So I just found a file that's gonna fit nicely in here, but you just need something that's gonna be able to twist and pop the halves open. I need two screwdrivers, one to hold the gap open and then one to work my way down a little bit farther. Okay, then again on this side we have the other end of the white cable. I'm kind of using the circuit board as my lever point rather than doing it on the cable. Obviously it's a broken cable so I'm not too worried about it. And the black one's underneath, I'm not going to touch that. And there we go. You can see it got kinked really hard at some point and that just is not good for it. So if I had to guess, I'd say this point right here was where it failed. This is the most delicate part of the whole operation. You gotta make sure that this is laying really straight on top of the correct pins when you insert it. Because if it's crooked or if it's one tooth over, one pin over, you could uh, destroy the whole thing. So you just wanna make sure it goes in really smooth, kind of wiggle it, make sure there's no resistance. Make sure that it's not on top of these little pins here. They gotta be in between those gray plastic pins. And then while you're holding pressure into the plug, you lay this down and click it into place. So putting this back together is just a reverse of taking it all apart. Lots of busy work, not too complicated. Okay, so one note is just make sure you put that black cable into the back of the DVD player before you fully lift the console up uh, to the ceiling, otherwise you're not gonna be able to plug it in. All the other cables can be reached and plugged in um, after the console is attached to the ceiling. And with lifting the console, you can do it by yourself for those four push pins, but it really helps to have some help to get them centered and then get enough force to pop them in. Okay, let's give this a shot. All right, video's working up front. And in the back, road trip saved. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.